I want to help you guys build your teams. I want to help you guys make money by having a budget so that you know what to spend before you spend it. How, how brilliant is that? That's how Aquas Cave has survived the downturn in the economy. I'm excited. Today is the day for Aquascape Academy at Aqualand. There it is. And when you own a Jeep and you own the joint, you get to make your own driveway. So everybody coming from all over North America to the Aquascape Hands-On Academy today. A lot of different contractors coming in, retailers to learn how to be certified Aquascape contractors, how to be successful. There's so many artists out there that need to learn how to be businessmen. We like to help them out. So let's go do this. You ready to do this, Buckeye? This event was created for you guys to come and see the system and ask your questions and contribute to that. So all of these different breakout groups for the next three hours that we're gonna start, Okay, you can rotate between them or you can sit there for three hours and get your 2018 budget done. Whatever you wanna do. The best way to learn something is to teach it. So my team will get better helping you so there are no such thing as a dumb question. We are here for you as long as you wanna be here. We will not leave tonight until you want to leave. All right, so we have a full house at the Aquascape Hands-On Academy. Uh, I'm gonna go see what everybody is doing. Uh, what I like to do as the CEO is not work on the business, but instead work in the business, which means my team has the honor of being able to work with all of these customers. We do it every November, January, February, March, April, and it's really, teaching people what we've been doing for 27 years, showing them a manual, showing them a system, and helping them with their businesses. I think the greatest satisfaction in life is helping someone else reach their fullest potential. All right, we got the Academy agenda here. Day one, we are at 345. So we got uh, water feature installation going on in the sandbox. We have business operations in the training room, accounting in the private dining room, executive boardroom for HR, and we got marketing up in the war room. Let's go check this thing out. This is impressive to me. I'm sitting here looking at the private dining room, pretty much filled with guys working on their finances. And if you're a landscape contractor or a garden center owner, and you're sitting here in a class taught by a CFO on finances, that's pretty impressive. This is not their normal mainstream. How's Beth doing, guys? Yes? We're making the money money. That's what I want to hear. Good, good. Ah, that is impressive. What's going on is we're having a marketing workshop for our contractor customers. So what are they learning? They are learning about websites, social media, videography, print marketing, pretty much anything all that the, falls under it. All the resources that we use. When you're talking about marketing, when you're talking about getting in front of people, um, the biggest thing is it gives you an opportunity to show the world who you are as a company, what yep. you do on a daily basis, get your personality out there. And this is the best way to do it. So Abilene and Jennifer and the rest of the team are going over all this super, super important information that's gonna right. show people exactly how to do it. The blogs and Facebook and yep. different, uh, different all, you name it. <laughs> and then this is the operations room over here. This is where we have our central meeting, but this is going on. Um, how to basically run the business. Everybody's number one question, whether you're a landscaper or you're a homeowner or you're a relative, people always ask my neighbors, what do you guys do in the winter? Okay, so this is actually really good, Brian. Why don't you talk a little bit about um, how you actually believe having a winter makes you sell more ponds during the season because you actually have an end in mind and then you, it's time for to work on the business, not in it. We have a very, very set start date. April 1st for us is go time. And when we have a start and a finish line, you work your butt off to get stuff done here. When you don't have a start and a finish and it's warm all the time, there's way more of the mentality like, ah, we can get it next day, ah, we can get it next day, and days turn into weeks, weeks turn, weeks turn into years, and there's no motivation to get going. So I love that because that's Brian, who's been with me now 23 years, telling contractors basically everything that we do all winter long to run a business. And, and if he can actually, it's not theory, what we're actually talking about, I mean, here, where's Brian? There's Brian. 
He's been around since 1995, okay? Only surp surpassed by Ed and then of course myself. Um, but we've been doing this for, this is my 27th year doing this. We can actually talk to talk because we were walking the walk. Hey, how are we doing in here? We're doing fine. So, so, what's, uh, so what's the biggest thing that we've covered so far? Um, we talked about labor's hard to get. <laughs> Very hard to get. Um, and right now we're talking about retention and keeping good employees. Yeah. Um, and the struggles with losing people. And right. how to reward employees, simple ways to reward employees. And the next question is how to get and keep a Chris Hansen. <laughs> I know that's what I love the fact that you just said Chris Hansen and didn't say Ed Ballou or Brian Helfrich because I, I have told Chris that he has restored my faith in humanity because he's a younger younger guy for our age guys and he works his butt off and he is passionate and cares. So Tavia, explain what's going on. What are we putting on here today? We are doing a backyard waterfall landscape fountain kit mm -hmm. and we're doing it um, with basically an instructor and two guys um, and a couple of people watching. We have Cullum here, which I think is awesome. Yep. awesome. So he's going to get a chance to see that. Because Cullum won't be here tomorrow, yes. I will also show him how to do a tax they earn on the basin as oh, well. That's nice. Because that's something he can easily do at this point. Currently, he could do that this summer with a couple buddies. Yeah. And make a profit and start running his own business this summer doing that. Love it. You might probably already know this, but Cullum reminds me of another kid that I knew really well when I was uh, 12 years old and had a lot of hurdles. So uh, he's an awesome guy, and he, I, I, I literally, he's in eighth grade, and I would hire him tomorrow to work on our construction crew because he never stops moving. When we did the Ponds for Kids Day over at Redling Middle School, he was always there, he was always asking questions, he always had a shovel in his hand, and he's always ready to go. So hire for attitude, train for aptitude. I would hire him in a heartbeat because of his awesome attitude. So I'm excited that his mom is putting him in a real school today and learning a real skill, which we need more kids doing that. Hey, buddy. Yeah. You got my kind of energy. I like you. Yeah, look at that. So how you like having a puppy at Aqualand? He's so good. Yeah. What's up, Coda? What's up? Yeah. Yeah. This is the 600,000 gallon front pond at Aqualand. And you probably can hear this. That is the waterfalls. That rock right there is 47,000 pounds. We put that in there. But that, those rocks are the frame rocks of the signature waterfalls at the signature pond at Aqualand. And it all is on a concrete basin that we completely camouflaged and made into a grotto. Check this out. Look how cool that is. There's probably two and a half feet of ice in here. Oh my, it's like Narnia. But look at that, that's behind the waterfall. For two years running with a virus that was from hell and now I've got the supercomputer back. So you literally came to the academy and the Aquascape IT guy fixed your computer? Yes. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So Bill, let me see that. What happened yesterday? Snow plowing. I hit the manhole in the skidster. <laughs> I got 28 stitches and three staples going up. Oh my gosh. Just yesterday. Just yesterday. Hey, and you're at work the next day. That's my kind of man right there. I know what you're doing, Jeff. Ex hey. Explain to the viewing public what you're doing over here. I am subscribing and viewing to Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guys channel. And who are we focused on today? This really good looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is day three of us vlogging about you, right? Day three, definitely. And uh, I didn't know what to expect, you know, just from go having you come out. Um, but um, after seeing what uh, I was able to be showcased on, um, it's been really good for my business. Was this a first timer for no, you as well? First timer. So why, why did you come? Uh, I just I had an interest in the business, uh, like you said. Don't uh, reinvent the wheel. Find somebody that's doing it well and try and follow what they're doing. You're you're the Jersey guy, right? I'm the Jersey guy. I could tell yeah. the accent. Are you are you a fireman? I am a fireman full time. Yeah. Did, did you did you meet our full time fireman over there, I didn't Jeff? Know we had another fireman. Come here. Let's meet. Let's meet, meet him. him. Hey, you see the, you see what this guy's wearing? He's he's a brother in arms. <laughs> Where you work? Down in Florida. Florida, I'm in New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. You look a little bit more wet behind the ears. How, no. long, you, how long you been doing this, buddy? Well, fireman or the fireman? Fireman. A uh, year and a half. Okay, yeah. Jeff. Yeah. 
20. <laughs> <laughs> You're a first timer. First time. And you wore a Penn State thing in my ass. Okay, I look did. at you. I had to take off the vest and show it off when <laughs> I saw the Ohio State stuff. Yeah. So what are you thinking so far, buddy? It's awesome. I mean, already it's worth the investment, just that binder. It's literally a book of gold. I came in here uh, for the construction part, but Lynn told us, she goes, you need to go to the, the accounting class. And you listened to your better half. And I did, I was there the whole time. And uh, the takeaway is that I have to get out of the field and, and start running my business. And that is probably one of the main things is knowing my numbers and I don't know my numbers. And uh, you know. Not unusual that you are, you are in the majority, not the minority with that. Right. True or false? True. And I'm gonna be turning 60 years old and I can't be in the field all the time. And so, and that is probably the big part. I was in marketing. Okay, so you sent him to the boring class and you went to the fun class. It's not boring. There's always something new. Things change so quickly. So as long as you have the, the stepping stones and the, the blocks that you need to use to be successful, as when it comes to the marketing part of the business, then you can learn the rest. Amen. I uh, just hired my sister full time to take care of HR and marketing and to have this book just saved thousands and thousands of hours. Um, I've been putting procedures in place for the last couple of years, but you can only do so much with you know a short amount of winter season. And to have something like this that we can use as templates, use pieces uh, right off the bat is gonna be just fantastic. To have this 32 years ago would have been gold. Anybody that's new, I would love to be in their position right now. Because my mind is, I thought I had it all figured out. It's here, right here. Jason, where are you at? Right here. Over here. I want to talk to that guy because what works in here will work for you. So what did you get out of today? This is your first Aquascape experience. What are you thinking? Uh, my background is actually in uh, financial advising and insurance. And so marketing, um, 15 years I did that and I started a lawn care business a uh, year and a half ago. Wow, so you hear total opposite. Yeah, total opposite. I go from wearing a suit every day to sweat my ass off, 100 degree heat. I, I, I prefer this this look, yeah. I don't know. A yeah, yeah. little more comfortable. I got way more than I expected, way more. So. And you got and you got Dan as a personal coach. And Dan. So not everything's good, but <laughs> <laughs> I was in marketing, but I don't want to talk about marketing. I okay. You know, I've been to 10 pondemoniums. This is better than pondemonium. Oh. And why is because Ooh, it's, 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 I it's love Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. But to get that franchise book to to share what everything Aquascape oh, oh, oh. does is pretty amazing and powerful. And thank you. Good. All right. That's awesome to hear. We don't tap the keg until the waterfalls are full. <laughs> okay, Chris, are we ready to start this thing? You're even you're even landscaping it, huh? Well, I, they're not playing on a even playing field. They got fake plants in there too. Uh, so, so you a little competition going on here? You know me. That's so how was so how was this group today? Would you? They were really good. Um, Colum, the 13 year old, yeah. was awesome. I love seeing that. Um, we had a good group of new guys uh, that had never done the Palmas backyard landscape waterfall kit before, so it was cool. All right, so you ready to turn this thing on now? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, plug it in. Where's the plug? Let's plug it in. Let it come to life. Water that's falling down into really, really shallow water. Um, it has more of a treble uh, type of a tone as well as the width of it versus this one up here on the top where the water's falling into a deeper pocket that's got a little bit more of a bass tone with it. So when we're really doing these waterfalls, we want to blend those two different two different sounds together, which is going to create the sound or beautiful music of a waterfall. Yeah, it's all about the bass. That bass, no treble. <laughs> Who wants to play some volleyball tonight? What is volleyball? Volleyball, good, Dan. I'm impressed. Uh, it's um, it's. <laughs> oh, I thought he'd be sleeping. Uh, <laughs> Like We're not in joke. your head. <laughs> uh, volleyball, volleyball is the most fun game ever. It's so funny to me to see people that are like, yeah, I didn't bring my gym, and they're up there sweating every time in boots. Yeah, sweating their butts off up there. So it's it's volleyball in a racquetball court. Okay, now the real fun begins. As soon as the uh, as soon as we tap the kegs, we'll be in here later in the hot tub and the spa and the sauna. But as uh, soon, soon as dinner's over, there's some guys downstairs drinking, but the real fun guys are upstairs at Aqualand having fun with the games. And this is what it's all about too. It's about connecting, it's about 
you know, after you've been sitting around all day and moving around a little bit, now you get to move around a lot. So I prefer this at night, coming up to the third floor of Aqualand. Those who sweat together, stick together. The whole third floor of Aquascape was devoted to fun and fitness because I learned more playing sports than any class that I ever took and I kind of don't think I'm alone in that. Leadership, goal setting, perseverance, work ethic, these are all things that I learned playing football. I wanted to build a building, a facility that supported people that wanted to do stuff like this. So downstairs, everybody's hanging out. Upstairs, everybody's working out. Looks like an intimate, I'm, I'm gonna guess they're talking marketing. <laughs> Maybe just a little, huh? So this is your first ever Aquascape training. What got you to come? I actually looked at Stanley on uh, the Dirt Monkey. Yeah, Stanley Genetic, uh-huh. And uh, he did a walkthrough of your facility. Yeah. And it was pretty obvious to me what kind of guy you are. And then of course the numbers didn't hurt. The margins that you're producing are pretty phenomenal. Uh, in our industry, it doesn't get any better. And so, well, you're, we're creating art for people, you know, and we're we're able to we're able to transform people's lives with with, with and get the satisfaction of that. And and uh, and when you do that, like we're doing right now, we're we're busy. Well, today, after 22 years in business, I've only built one water feature, and it's brought an amazing amount of life to my wife and I, mm -hmm. our home. And uh, it would be real easy for me to transition into doing more of that. You know what, the, and the best way to learn something is to teach it, so teaching guys like yourself how to do it just makes us better and a rising tide lifts all ships. And that's why my word is grateful. Yeah, <laughs> all right, brother. Does anybody know what the largest organization in the world is in terms of total amount of members? The acronym is AARP. Mm, yes. Yes, Chuck is in it, Chuck is in it, yeah. <laughs> so the American Association of Retired. Re Chuck, the American Association of Retired People did a survey and they asked all of their members, what one piece of advice would you give to Jeff Nija? The number one piece of advice universally from the majority of those people was, to future generations like Jeff and all of us was, three words, be happy now. Amen? Amen. Not tomorrow, not in five years when I could get out of the oppressionness of a political organized system, not when I win the lottery, because we all know when you win the lottery, that solves all your problems and doesn't create any more. <laughs> Be happy now. Carpe diem, seize the day. I don't know about you, but I might not be here tomorrow. I said goodbye to Jamie. Remember the guy I called from stage at Pondemonium? I said goodbye to him when I was out in, in November when I went out to California. I remember the last time I was walking out the door. <laughs> I remember how he looked at me. I thought to myself, of course, the guy's 112 pounds. Might be the last time I see him. Very well possible. Might have been the last time he saw me and he might have survived and I might have get, been in a car accident. No guarantee. He could have outlived me. No guarantee for any of us. Which is why AARP says, be happy now, man. So I'm happy every day when God gives me a problem to fix. When I got a challenge with my kids when I've upset my wife and I've got to apologize, when I've screwed up with a customer and I've got to say, I'm sorry, because I'm human and I'm a sinner. I'm not perfect. And if I try to make myself perfect, then I'm not going to be happy because it's impossible to be perfect. And so my wish, belief, hope, prayer for everybody that comes to this is don't wait till tomorrow to be happy. Be happy when somebody steals $900,000 from you and you can thank God that you made $900,000 that they could steal. Because if you want to be miserable about that, 
you'll be out of business. Or you can just get back on it and say, I got to be better. Because that man has owned everything. He said, I did not have checks and balances in my system. Now I got checks and balances because I learned from that valley. We learn from our mistakes. But that doesn't mean we need to regret what we've done and let it weigh us down and eat us up. I regret things that I've done, but I don't focus on them. I learn from them to get better. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is happiness. You have children. How many people have kids in here? We're going to pretend you're in the AARP now. What do you want out of them? The number one thing. You want them to be happy. And everybody's happiness might be a little different. It is a little different, right? But what makes me happy is wanting and helping you guys find happiness. So I hope that over the last 24 hours, doesn't it seem like it's been longer than that, that you guys got to experience what Aquascape is all about playing sports upstairs, connecting, seeing our team help you be successful. And if you want to make me happy, I hope you would. If you want to make me happy, don't keep this stuff to yourself. Share it. Go on Facebook, encourage people to come to the February 1. Encourage new guys, James, that haven't been here. I mean, this guy, James, watches a video online, and a month later, he's up here. Because that's a winner. That's the kind of guy that I want to invest in. I don't want to just do a free seminar and then have everybody just try to take from me. I want to be able to give it to people that actually want to use the stuff that I want to prepare. You make, you make me get out of bed in the morning. I was excited to see you today. You're the kind of guy that makes us get out of bed in the morning too. This book you gave us, I don't know if all of you understand what kind of value that is, but I've got a, a consultant in my business right now helping us build the, the JPL Bible. Uh -huh. And you just gave us such an amazing gift where we can focus on coaching and training because I mean, we're halfway there. We just got to customize it to JPL. But we don't really have to change anything because you got it in there. That's a real gift, man. It's a blessing. And, and I'll tell you where the gift came Thank you. And I'll tell you where the gift came from. The gift came from me saying to my team, because I didn't do that binder. The gift came from my, my team. I said, put down what we do so we can help other people. And every one of them worked their butts off to put that together. And now they can be proud of what they created. I didn't create that binder. All I created was let's do this and then the team built it and that's how you keep people. That's how you keep people unplugged in, that's how you keep people motivated, keep people engaged. Yeah, how about a hand for the team? I agree with that. Tell them, come here. What do you think, buddy? You having fun? Yeah, G7X. That, that is, you like that? Yeah. Yeah, so that's my vlog camera. That's cool. What do you like about ponds? Um, that, that you can be creative about it, but it also takes hard work and it's something to learn about. So is your mom excited about you coming here today? 